to the show. My guest today is Fiona Lang. Fiona is a general manager for BBC Studios in Australia and New Zealand. And she started her career as a legal counsel working in uh, entertainment industry for about 10 years now. Fiona is also a passionate non-exec for UN Women Australia and football uh, New South Wales. Next to a keen learner, she's also an avid teacher. Fiona has been teaching lead and ballroom for almost 15 years now. And what you might not know about her is that she has recently taken up uh, belly dancing classes. <laughs> a keen dancer, this new style is one of her latest challenges. Fiona, to get to know you even better, um, can I ask you five quick questions? Go ahead. Okay. What is something you cannot live without? Uh, a good night's sleep. Mm. And what are three words that describe you best? Um, focused, um, energetic, and I'd say a dose of uh, passion or heart. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize that. that. <laughs> and what inspires you? Uh, I love, I'm inspired by really good leadership of teams. Mm. Mm. And what is the best advice that you ever had? Um, I think it was actually not to me, but it was Jurgen Klopp who said something about um, leave your best play behind. If you can reset, then you can regain. Mm. I love that one. Yeah. And what is your hidden talent that you have? <laughs> it's don't know whether it's a talent, but a hidden ability is my memory. It's scary. Yeah. Oh, wow. But a very convenient one, right? Yeah. Okay, let's get started. I'm really keen to learn about how you shift your leadership. Great. So what is your take on adaptability and where do you see the biggest opportunities to adapt? Yeah, I think adaptability is one of those words that... Um, as senior leaders, we sort of know it's important, but I think it's still a little bit theoretical. Um, we tend to know that it's sort of important to adapt because we understand, you know, globalization and the pace of change with technology. Yeah. But at the same time, um, it's abstract because most of us as senior leaders have kind of come up having spent often a decade or so learning uh, specialist skills. Um, we, we tend to be in this cycle, um, even if we don't know it, of, of doing perfecting, repeating, doing perfecting, repeating. And, and that can mean that we, we take that as a solution to any situation. Um, and I think really for me, adaptability is about taking that first step to acknowledge what, what a situation needs, even if it isn't what your mastered skill requires. And I think adaptability is also about this, the next step is going and sourcing the thing that's really needed. That might be your solution, but it might also be something a junior team member has or something you need to go and find externally. Um, or it might be something you have, but you're not well practiced at. Um, yeah. You're drawing on something that's a little bit more clumsy in, in your own repertoire. Yeah. Um, in terms of the biggest opportunity for leadership, I think it is, uh, sorry, for agility, I think it's now. I think COVID has changed our circumstance. So mm. uh, our opportunity to, to take that step about what's needed and in what dose uh, we need to give things is, is right now. And I think it is a, a phenomenal um, opportunity. Yes, absolutely. How do you ensure that strategic thinking is still prioritized? Funny how the things you learn in some of those earlier years mm. that you don't like doing and feel very disconnected can sometimes come back to, to be real advantages. And I think this is one of those, um, in my youth, early years, I did consulting mm. and we needed to make every recommendation to our paying clients by reference to a strategic framework. Mm. Um, it meant that we needed to be ex able to explain, you know, why we were making a decision, how it would set up a client, what a client was giving up by making that decision in terms of opportunity cost or short-term gain. Yeah. Um, it was grueling. Uh, you were often uh, being challenged by supervisors, by the clients themselves. Um, yeah. 
And, you know, fast forward a decade, um, and I find myself using those very techniques now when speaking to managers, we, we reference that strategic framework. Um, but as life becomes really, really busy, as it has, uh, particularly yeah. in sort of current, current times, I've uh, adopted a more recent practice at the end of the week, just giving myself half an hour quiet time <laughs> to reflect on the decisions I've made during the course of the week yeah. and whether I can answer to a strategic case. I won't lie, um, sometimes it does result in sort of making a few phone calls to unpick or to, to add some follow-ons around decisions earlier made. No, absolutely, and, and it's also, uh, it it's, uh, keeps you fresh on, on how you're tracking and where you're going. Eh? Hey, and, and what do you do to keep up with leadership and industry developments? Yeah, um, th this is actually a really important one for me because I personally have shifted the industry I've worked in a lot and the kind of leadership, which is general management I'm now in, is not the kind of leadership I thought when I started out. Um, I, I do actually find it some, sometimes disheartening where you see um, employment in Australia being so focused on the exact skills in the exact same industry. So I think we, we kind of collectively need to work really hard on this one to be able to demonstrate that, mm -hmm. that you know, we, we can change and learn. Um, yeah. So for me, a big one is around reading. Um, fortunately, I love the industries I'm in, which is sport media and, and sort of world politics. And I can do that quite easily and, and by reference to sort of what's happening overseas. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I am somebody that reading's good, but I learn a lot more when I do. Um, so I have particularly in the last sort of five years, really proactively found leadership opportunities to sort of learn. Uh, I recently took on deputy chair of Football New South Wales, which yeah. is a big body uh, for soccer. And, and that's just the board, the amount of learning um, that you're getting from an incredibly experienced board has been phenomenal. Yeah. And I think just understanding that not all of the learning can come from that, that particular full-time path within an organisation has been really helpful for me yeah. to, to yeah. keep the learning in different ways in different fields. Sounds great. And um, how do you get clarity in complex dilemmas in all the roles that you play? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this also is an interesting one and um, how we refer to it in the team as I sort of change my lens or I reset my Zoom focus, if you want to use that analogy on the computer. Yeah. So I tend when something's quite complex to need to initially go quite high and to look down at a problem um, to see in it in context of where it's come from, where it's going. Um, but then after that, I do need to engage with the complexity. I'm sort of unable to, to avoid, and that doesn't mean I'm sort of wanting to repeat the work done by others or, or to take on additional work, but just actually to sort of engage and understand the reasons why it's complex um, yeah. with that sort of zoom, zoom focus there. And then pretty much by the time you've done that, when you go back to high level, uh, mm -hmm. it tends to have answered itself. Um, so yeah, that, that tends to be my um, magic recipe. And yeah. if I don't procrastinate and I, I factor in enough time for that, it, it normally works. It's a great process. And so we're at the last question now. Uh, when you were uh, looking at these questions and from reflection on that, what have you told yourself to do or be more uh, going forward? It, it's actually been a really interesting thing because I think it's something so obvious, which is um, learning's all around. Uh, it's all around me. And yeah. it was the reference I made to the opportunity with Football New South Wales and, and just being part of that board. And it makes you reflect on how much learning is happening around you if if you want to find it you can um and that that can be as simple as you know my my children's um soccer teams it can be in the the local charity uh, it can actually be in your workplace um so i think my takeaway is um to more consciously uh, reflect on those and the learning around that it doesn't all require an mba it, it's in front of you uh, and, and it's there for the taking. So that's, I, I plan on taking it more, is, is the response. Yeah. That's a great resolution. And I'll join you in uh, let's keep learning and keep evolving. And uh, so thank you so much, Fiona, for sharing all the rich insights and tips. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in and uh, keep learning and keep shifting. See you next time. Bye.